I don't want to. What? Legs! I've still got legs! Good! What? 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 Eyes! The two doctors look at each other. Eleven starts the conversation. When I said I didn't want to go, I didn't quite expect this. But how is this even... By regeneration. But that's a myth. Yes, well, I rather thought it was too, but hey-ho, here we are. Well, where do we go from here? Well, I don't know, but this is my TARDIS. Oh, no. Now, hold on. Suddenly, the TARDIS sparks, shakes and crashes. The two doctors kick into gear, holding onto the TARDIS console. Ten is sent flying across the room. Eleven grabs his scanner and laughs at the idea of crashing. The coral pillars begin to collapse and the doctor picks up a hand-sized chunk of the TARDIS. Holding it, he speaks. What have you done to my TARDIS? Our TARDIS? The TARDIS crashes more and more until the two doctors lose total control and the box heads towards Earth. Crashing in Amelia Bond's garden, the two doctors exit, talking with her about the crack as Eleven finds his feet. The cloister bell rings and Eleven dives into the TARDIS. The box takes off, leaving Ten stranded on Earth with Amy. This wasn't by any means intentional, but the TARDIS was acting very erratic and just took off as soon as Eleven entered. Over the years, the Tenth Doctor quickly got to the mystery of the Prisoner Zero and put an end to it. Many years later, eventually the Eleventh Doctor did return, where he once again encountered the Tenth Doctor, who by this time who had built and grown his own TARDIS. We know from the deleted scene in Journey's End that throwing a chunk of the TARDIS can lead to building or growing a new one, and with Russell himself stating that it's canon, who's to argue with the boss? With the Doctors agreeing to split and go their separate ways, albeit without an Amy Pond in the picture, the two Time Lords head off into the universe. The timeline changes here, as the 11th Doctor heads to the Star Whale, resulting in him killing it brain dead, as he no longer had Amy to stop him. This ultimately doesn't show this Doctor where the line is, or teach him a valuable lesson, setting him on a darker path. As Churchill phones the TARDIS, both phones ring and the two Doctors arrive. Both are considerably angry at the survival of the Daleks, but with Eleven being fuelled just that bit more by hatred and anger. With one Doctor on the ship and the other on the ground, their pair managed to both defeat the Daleks for good, blowing up the Paradigm ship and also stopping Bracewell from detonating. With Ten seeing the darker side to his later incarnation, he makes a note to check up from time to time, even if in secret, and they both part ways heading off into the universe. We know that the Doctors do love to keep score, so it's not too long after this that both incarnations meet again in the museum, leading to the events of the Angel story. The events wrap up much faster and River notices several inconsistencies in her book. After all, the timeline shifted dramatically as the Doctor by regenerated. With the 10th Doctor sharing info on Eleven becoming darker, Ten and River agree to keep an eye. But River's worries are much bigger than that, as if Amy and Rory don't travel with the Doctor, then how is she ever born? 
but with the 11th Doctor committing genocide in Venice and the 10th Doctor facing the Dream Lord, the 10th Doctor then gets a call from Amy Pond in the year 2020 when she became trapped under a dome with Rory in a Silurian incursion. As the 10th Doctor, Amy and Rory stop the Silurians, Rory is swallowed up into the crack in time. Amy forgets and the Doctor realises what he has done, but with enough time apart from Donna he is in a much better place, and 10 and Amy head for the stars. Their adventures take them to Vincent van Gogh, James Gordon and eventually the Pandorica, where events play out near identically. With Rory's return, the only change is not only needing a vortex manipulator, as there happens to be another TARDIS still around. With the universe saved, the two Doctors part ways once more, Ten, Amy and Rory and River take on the Silence, Pirate's Uncle, the Rebel Fresh and Madame Gavorian. They meet Hitler, Toy Dolls and weird robots offering kindness. With the companion switch leaving Eleven alone, his loneliness fuels his darker path even more. Ten continues travelling, facing his darkest fears and taking on the Cybermen. But eventually, time catches up with the Doctor on Lake Silencio, and the Tenth Doctor is seemingly killed. With the universe collapsing, a TARDIS naturally doesn't work, meaning the events of the Wedding of River Song play out literally exactly the same, just with Ten instead. With the Daleks no longer existing thanks to their total extermination, the events of the Asylum don't happen. So the 10th Doctor, Amy and Rory take on dinosaurs, they head to the Great Wild West and then even take on cubes and the Weeping Angels. The 10th Doctor is grief ridden from losing the bonds and from it being his Doctor who saved Vastra, he heads to Victorian London. He there encounters Clara, who he meets and obviously then meets her end in the same story. As Ten continues to sulk, it's up to the 11th Doctor to save the day in the Bells of St. John. He simply cuts off the programming, killing all those who have been uploaded, but in the process meets Clara Oswin Oswald, who begs the Doctor to let her see the stars. With something deep inside of him knowing he needs someone, he agrees and the two head for the stars, but the 11th Doctor is still on his darker path. He destroys the Great Sun, helps kill Grand Marshal Skullzak and the two aliens in Hyde. The Crimson Horror is where things now again take a change. With the 10th Doctor still sulking in Victorian London, after all we know he took his companion loss much harder than any other Doctor. The two Doctors finally meet after all this time. This is where 10 no notices how dark Eleven has truly become and obviously sees Clara but I think that would eventually sort itself out and they'd kind of realise what's going on there. Adventure after adventure continues and we have a rather funny day of the Doctor with two tens, war and a bioregenerated Eleven. But the time of the Doctor is where everything changes. With his anger at an all time high, his loneliness still impacting him even if being with Clara, the Eleventh Doctor opens the crack in time with his name and the time war two begins with all-out war breaking out on Trenzalore and everyone firing on the planet the planet is eventually and honestly pretty quickly obliterated and the 11th doctor loses his only friend he ever had Clara but now he is the doctor no more and is instead the Valyard with the Time War 2 obviously actually seeking a quick end, thanks to the planet's total annihilation, the Valiar heads off with the 10th Doctor chasing after him. The robots in deep breath, the Veil kills. He kills the Dalek. It's the 10th Doctor who luckily encounters Robin Hood, so he survives. 10 saves Cole Hill from the Skull Vox Blitzer, and 11 kills the Moon. 10 saves the day on the Orient Express, and 11 slaughters the Boneless. The trees resolve themselves, and then it changes even more. In the Series 8 finale, the 11th Doctor accepts Missy's army, and the two wage war. The Daleks and Scarrow are killed. The base under the lake blown up, the Maya killed, the Zygon to begin a rebel attack, all killed. With the Valyard, Missy and the Cybermen raging war across the universe, the 10th Doctor needs to stop him, but there is only one way he can. The Tenth Doctor has to die. If he dies, then the bioregeneration reconnects and the timeline will resync. When he eventually finds the trap street, he takes his opportunity and the Raven comes for the Doctor, killing Ten. The timelines resync and the pair are now both back in the TARDIS. The bioregeneration now doesn't happen and the Tenth Doctor regenerates into Eleven. I don't want to go.
We know that the Tenth Doctor greatly healed over his time in this timeline, healing from the pain of Donna and so much more. We know that 14 healed, which is why 15 is able to move on. So who knows, but maybe this is what actually happened, and it's why 11 so quickly moves on from the events of Series 4. I know nothing much changes in the total end of this one, as it's not going to, as we know with 14 and 15 always ending back on the helipad to cancel out the by regen, 10 and 11 would also end up back in the TARDIS. But still, it's definitely interesting to see what would happen, so maybe we can do this with some other doctors. Anyway, thanks for watching, please leave suggestions, and see you later.